<laughs> it Boy, how the time flies, <laughs> doesn't it? Whoa. Okay. Picture this. You're on your way to your favorite ice cream parlor. When you first walk in, you can smell the sweet scent of baking waffle cones and chocolate syrup. You think to yourself, hmm, what flavor do I want to try today? So you step into line, and immediately your eyes are glued on the ice cream display case in front of you. There are so many flavors, from vanilla to chocolate, peanut butter cup, and my favorite, cookies and cream. They all look so delicious. But today, I want to try something new, something different, something delicious, North Dakota ice cream. Individuals have been shying away from traditional ice cream in search for something new, healthier, and plant-based. Although a lot of individuals love dairy, dairy doesn't always love them back. We wanted to create a product using North Dakota oats that everyone can enjoy. Our cooperative, Dakota Specialty Grains, was founded in Carrington, North Dakota in 1985. Due to the recent decline for demand and price for oats, we proposed a joint venture with Sunny Dairy out of Washington State to create a new demand for our oat products. It's no secret that ice cream has been a staple in American freezers for many years. What's changing recently is the fact that consumers are demanding a higher quality product. This stems from two primary reasons health and ethics. That created an explosion in the plant-based dairy alternative market. However, with that explosion came a new need for, text, for texture sorry, and flavor. Now, we held fo focus groups to understand if consumers were pleased with the product that is on the shelves, and overall, they were not. It's very bland, not a lot of flavor, they weren't really that satisfied. So then we worked at the grocery store to conduct primary research to understand taste, texture, satisfaction, and whether or not they would buy the product. As you can see with the first seven pints, those are all plant-based alternatives. Very low numbers. We were alarmed by how the satisfaction was. People were not willing to buy this ice cream. Blue Bunny Dairy over there was surveyed next. That's traditional milk-based, much higher. It's that decadent, delicious flavor that consumers love. And then North, the, North Dakota ice cream is right next to it. Much better flavor, much better than the alternatives. Now that's kind of a dated picture, but what is not dated, however, is ice cream and frozen dessert demand in the United States. In our targeted region, it's a $2.84 billion industry that's expected to grow to over $3 billion by 2020. Our target market has a purchasing power of $272 million and on average spends $83 on ice cream per person every single year. Our target, our target market has two primary segments. Our first segment is Asian Americans ages 20 to 35 with an average income of $60,000. As marketers in this country, we have to embrace um, diversity. Uh, but what we can't do is generalize the Asian American demographic. They're very diverse and they're very different, so we had to do extra research to understand them better individually. Family is at the center of Japanese American culture. They love ancestry and spending time with all the generations in the household. They're incredibly brand loyal and are very tech savvy and efficient. We wanna focus our marketing message of family towards them. Filipino Americans love to be together. They are the true socialites. They love to dine, drink, and eat, and laugh together, and they love humor. This is why we want to focus the message of positivity towards them. Indian Americans are typically first generation when they come over to the United States. They're highly educated, get great jobs, they love to read and write product reviews, and they love to care about the environment and health, and are willing to pay a premium for both. Vietnamese Americans uphold their culture, their native culture, better than most when assimilating to the United States. 
they trust brands, and they're incredibly entrepreneurial. And with these new business ventures, they are spending this added income on better quality health and food products. Chinese Americans are masters at blending Eastern tradition with Western culture. In many ways, they assimilate and understand Western culture through their avid use of social media. And in addition, they love to be focused when, they're, when you're marketing to them. They love to know that they're appreciated and that they're wanted by a brand. Our second target market is the progressive food consumer. These are individuals 20 to 35 and have an average household income of $50,000. In our daily culture, these individuals are called foodies typically. These are individuals who love to go out on their Friday and Saturday nights with their friends. They love to eat at new restaurants, try new food, share about it on social media with their friends. You know, I ate here, this was amazing. They are also individuals that follow a restrictive food diet. This can be anything. It might be just as simple as low carb, but it could be more strict like a vegetarian or a vegan diet as well. And they're incredibly environmentally conscious. These are the individuals at the grocery store who are reading the label. They're taking the time to understand what goes into their products and what the backstory of the business that they're trying to understand is. This is why we wanna focus our message of transparency towards them. This segments into, or segues I should say, into one of our biggest strengths, which is our environmental footprint. Oats use significantly less water than all of the other ice cream plant-based alternatives in, in milk. And we think this is really gonna resonate with that target demographic due to the fact that in the Western United States, water is such a hot topic and it really resonates with the individuals there. We're seeing some great trends right now that really indicate to us that it is the perfect time for North Dakota ice cream to penetrate the market. Not only are we seeing a growth in demand for plant-based frozen desserts, but we're also seeing a steady decline in U.S. dairy consumption since 1970. Along with this, we are seeing great trends for both segments of our target market. For our first segment, we see that Asian Americans are the fastest growing demographic in the United States. And for our second segment, we see that a significant amount of millennials practice some sort of restrictive food diet, as well as half of them would consider themselves a foodie. North Dakota and ice cream will benefit its producers by making oats more than just some rotation crop, but rather producers can get excited about producing oats because of the increase in demand and the increase in profitability from the 50 cent premium we will pay along with the patronage that they will receive because of our product. Some of our strengths include really being able to listen to our target market and their concerns for the environment. We will do this by being eco-friendly as well as using less water in the production process than our competitors. Some of our weaknesses include a limited shelf life because it is a refrigerated product, as well as a lack of product awareness. We are also seeing some fantastic opportunities. These include a growth in demand for dairy-free alternatives, along with the growth in demand for frozen desserts. And like any agricultural product, we face a threat of weather and natural disasters and the effects it can have on the growing process. And we also face the threat of possible product imitation. North Dakota and ice cream will enter the market by being one of the first oat-based ice creams. It will be able to differentiate itself from two different scoops of competitors, these being the dairy-free ice creams such as Dream, So Delicious, and Coconut Bliss, and the dairy-based ice creams such as Ben & Jerry's, Halo Top, and Haagen-Dazs. As you can see, we are competitively priced, have fewer calories, as well as significantly less sugar than most of our competitors. North Dakota and ice cream will have the unique ability and not only having that rich, creamy texture of dairy-based ice cream that we all know and love, but also really being able to focus on the values of our foodie target market and those of our customers with a dairy aversion. North Dakota and ice cream will be the best of both worlds. North Dakota and ice cream is an organic, gluten-free frozen dessert that's marketed as an ice cream. It uses a proprietary enzyme blend amylase, which increases digestibility and gives us that rich, creamy texture. It also gives us an overrun of 80%, which is the air to fat ratio, which gives us that creamy texture. It will be offered in both vanilla and chocolate with seasonal flavors rotated every single quarter chosen by our consumers. They might choose something like mango or maybe they go with something crazy like matcha. Now, our strategy statement is to increase member income by delighting ice cream enthusiasts with our new plant-based product. 
Our goal is to increase member profits by revolutionizing the dairy alternative market, melting away market share from both traditional ice cream as well as dairy alternatives. Our objectives by year three include earning a 20% profit margin, capturing 1% market share, achieving 10% return on investment, and selling 1.2 million units. To do so, we go, under, we go under the assumptions that we meet all USDA, FDA, and food truck standards, we meet all ice cream labeling requirements, we have that proprietary enzyme blend and that it is patented, and that industry trends discussed earlier continue. North Dakota Nice Cream will not only be one of the first oat-based ice creams on the market, but it'll be the first dairy alternative that has that creamy, rich, indulgent taste and texture consumers love. Even down to the way that when you scoop it out of the container, it creates that perfect half circle that curls under to fit perfectly on top of your ice cream cone. It will be packaged in a 16 ounce, four serving, biodegradable container, although it's okay to heat the whole pint in one sitting. <laughs> It will wholesale for $4.87 with the recommended MSRP of $5.99. North Dakota Nice Cream Trucks will sell delicious ice cream cones for $4.99. The co-op's pre-established DSD distribution networks will assist us as we plan to launch into the West Coast region of the United States. We're going to focus on entering Asian-specific ethnic markets, as well as stores that align with our foodies values, such as co-ops and natural grocers. In year one, we want to enter 40 stores in the Portland and Seattle areas. Moving into North California in year two, adding 180 stores to the network. And then expand in year three into Los Angeles and San Diego, adding 179 stores for a total of 399 stores in year three. In order to promote the OAT, promotions will be designed to reach, educate, convert, and engage with consumers to keep them sweet on the product. As marketers, we realize that there is no silver bullet in marketing. However, we have separated and allocated our marketing dollars per demographic to where we believe they'll be most effective. We have our demographics along the bottom as well as our marketing avenues along the top. Each demographic has their own marketing budget and the percentages within their columns reflect that. Japanese Americans are tech savvy and family oriented. This is why we are gonna be putting most of their marketing dollars towards digital advertising. Our research has shown that Vietnamese Americans are not very receptive to email or direct mail. So we have not allocated a large portion of their budget towards this platform. However, we will be monitoring this through our key performance indicators. Foodie millennials love coupons. I myself am way more willing to try a product if I have a coupon to do so. In addition, foodies eat with their eyes. This is why they're blogging, sharing, and posting all over an array of social media platforms to indulge in that food experience. We're gonna be allocating most of their budget towards coupon redemption, as well as digital advertising. As we plan to do this product launch, we have created our branding guide to ensure that we have a both cohesive and effective marketing campaign. This includes things such as our color palette, as well as our tagline, North Dakota Nice Cream Frozen with a Smile. Promotions are split into three different categories, paid, earned, and owned media. Due to our diverse marketing mix, we created a specific set of promotions to target each one. First, for paid media. Pay-per-click search advertisements will be sprinkled throughout Google AdWords using a long-tail, geo-targeted, location-based strategy. This is going to increase traffic to both our website and our social media pages. Millennials are cutting the cable and switching to a new media source, over-the-top television. OTT provides customers with multi-platform channels, including the popular Hulu, Sling TV, Direct TV, and many more. Here, we can specifically target our ads based on age, gender, location, and even specific household. North Dakota Nice Cream will be on many different social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and WeChat. Here, we're gonna be creating dynamic, mobile-friendly advertisements that's going to excite our tech-savvy target market. Now, seeing North Dakota Nice Cream isn't nearly as good as eating North Dakota Nice Cream, but our ads will have your mouths watering. We're gonna be on many different print media sources, including India West, Positively Filipino, and Eater Magazine. 15-second YouTube and radio ads will be placed throughout the California region. 
One in specific, a Chinese language radio station, KAZN AM 1300. From email to snail mail, we will deliver our message to our targeted consumers, making sure they don't miss out on any special promotions or coupons. Speaking of coupons, my favorite as a millennial, I am always looking for a new coupon to use. And we're going to use this to our advantage. They're going to be in many of our promotions. It gets its own day. <laughs> National Ice Cream Day. How perfect. Our ice cream trucks are going to be handing out free mini cones on National Ice Cream Day. And for an even bigger sales event, Singles Day. A day to indulge and treat yourself to something new. This Chinese-originated event resonates really well with our Asian-American demographic. Our owned media begins with our webpage and our social media sites. Our multilingual webpage will be the main information hub where we can educate our consumers and we'll have an interactive feature where they can vote on the new flavor of the season. Our food trucks are going to be selling delicious ice cream cones all over Southern California in year three, from local beaches to college campuses, food truck festivals, and will be featured in the Lexus Lace Up Running series in their food truck brunch. Who said you can't have ice cream for breakfast? <laughs> now to help us create all of these promotions, we hired a content creator and videographer who's gonna be helping us shoot our farm to freezer campaign. This is going to raise brand image as well as word of mouth marketing. And speaking of word of mouth marketing, that can sometimes be hard to control. However, we're gonna do our best. We're, we are going to be monitoring both social media as well as Yelp and Google reviews, increasing brand image. We will also be contacting several publications, encouraging them to write about plant-based ice creams and North Dakota ice cream. Looking at the business-to-business -business side of things, we will be going to several trade shows, including the Asian American Expo and the Vegan Street Fair. There, we want to be developing long-lasting relationships with vendors. And part of those relationships includes developing retail media, whether that be advertisements in stores or coupons in stores, and even putting our North Dakota ice cream, ice cream trucks outside of stores offering samples. This will increase point of purchase sales and it will increase brand image. Wow, that was a lot of promotions. Now I'm gonna hand it off to our finance guru to give us the scoop on how we're gonna pay for it all. You know, these finances in North Dakota and ice cream are very similar. You're gonna to wanna to keep coming back for more. In year one, our marketing budget will consist of a little more than $220,000. However, by year three, we will have over $1 million in our marketing budget. Loading in behind me are some key financial metrics. Gross sales, cost of goods sold, net income. Some important facts that you need to know about these finances are, we will give back to our North Dakota farmer by paying a 50 cent premium on their oats and paying over $100,000 in patronage in year three. Our cost of goods sold comes to $2.20 per unit, which we'll be selling wholesale at $4.87, which in return will generate over $4 million in gross sales. That's almost as rich as our ice cream. Our promotional campaign is filled with a diverse marketing mix and will require our KPIs in order to make sure we are reaching all our goals and objectives. We'll do this by monitoring our marketing strategies and platforms and seeing by collecting data on what marketing strategies and platforms are working best for each target demographic. For example, say our Vietnamese target demographic is more receptive to direct mail than we have allocated. We will then analyze our KPIs in order to figure out which marketing strategies are working best and reallocate those funds going forward. With any new product lots, we'll have to monitor it very closely to make sure we are hitting all our goals and objectives. We'll do this by releasing quarterly and annual reports to our co-op members, letting them know of any new business ventures, key financials and marketing strategies and other key details going forward. If we do not meet our expectations, we will then reassess our input costs and reevaluate our marketing strategies and advertisements. If we exceed expectations, we then can pay a higher patronage back to our farmers and reinvest that money back into North Dakota Specialty Grain Cooperative. In case of a PR emergency, we'll use our four-step crisis management approach, which will be to assess the situation and then address it both publicly and privately. We will then resolve the incident and process the incident to minimize the likelihood of it happening again. Now for the cherry on top. Go ahead. 
indulge in a couple flavors of North Dakota ice cream. You won't regret it because every scoop is frozen with a smile. We are now open to any of your questions. Congratulations on getting this far. Um, it's, been a, it's been a good run. You've had a couple uh, turns in the barrel. We're gonna give you the third turn right now. Um, <laughs> I got a couple questions. The, one of the first statements somebody made, and it stuck with me because agriculture has to deal with this. Somebody used the term, a product differentiator might be ethics. I want you to defend that. If somebody said it in the, like the very first or second moment. They, the, the reason that somebody would buy this product is, uh, I, there's one other word in ethics, and I, you lost me at ethics. I'm like, I think dairy farmers are some of the most ethical people there are. I mean. I, think, I don't know who was. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that statement, it wasn't necessarily a, like a shot at the dairy farmers. It's more just veganism and vegetarianism are growing, and so people mm -hmm. are just shying away sometimes from milk, like some mm -hmm. of those, those millennial foodie demographics. And then, I don't think I stated this enough, but the need in the Asian demographic was because science shows that upwards of 90% of them are lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that they have really a prom towards dairy farmers. And we're jointly going with the dairy farm, uh, dairy cooperative. It's just that they are pulling one of their unperforming brands, and they want to diversify the line. So it wasn't necessarily a shot at the dairy farmers. Sure, I, you, you just the, the the word was used, so yep, I'm going to yep. hold you accountable to yep, it. Yep, absolutely. Um, then my other question is, because it might be the only time, is do you ever did you ever consider selling through a broker or a distributor? Selling selling your product through a broker or a distributor. Or like a co-packer, for instance? Could that be? Uh, no, as somebody that's in that marketplace today, um, selling to the Asian or Vietnamese market, there are people sure. that have 100% of those relationships. Is that a consideration for you? Sure. Uh, we, we wanted to align with a co-op to share similar values. Mm -hmm. And then as well, they are already selling the ice cream, and so we wanted to use their relationships and their stores to help launch the product. You, you sort of alluded to this, that I think is a key assumption that it's going to have all the appropriate organic labels. Um, talk to me a little bit about that process in terms of making sure we are GMO certified. I'm assuming that's probably an issue, organic, and the whole, the whole gamut there as you're trying to go into that very specialized market. So with the organic certification, that'll be our, the farmer, the fields for three years prior won't have any synthetic pesticides or anything like that. So, and the, our co-op will be in charge of making sure our farmers meet that organic and other certifications. Okay, I'm gonna piggyback on that one. So, even though the grain is certified organic, the product still has to be sort of certified organic. So do you, did you account for that anywhere in your financials of making sure that that was taken care of, filing the paperwork and going through that process? Absolutely. Uh, it, it would be located in probably our cost of goods sold as we have already put a premium on our overhead to ensure any um, things we haven't accounted for. So. Okay. My other question was your primary research, um, when that was conducted, was it conducted where you got kind of a cross-section of your different Asian American audiences in that? Was that their perception of taste or was it an, another group's perception of taste? With our primary research, that was before we even looked into what kind of markets or who would be willing to buy this product. So that was in the Fargo-Moorhead area in the stores in our area okay. before we even decided who we wanted to market to. Okay, great. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I actually have a question regarding um, the financials, and um, you guys talked about doing some sampling off of the truck and with a free single small mini cone. Where is that at in the financials? And then also um, along those lines, did you look at sampling in any other bigger angles as a way that you could have more um, power over trying the brand? Yeah, sure. So can you pull up the marketing expense table? As far as the sampling goes, that's already budgeted into the least food truck category. And as far as other avenues to give out our samples, that would go maybe more into our retail media or our trade shows, which are also factored into those. So you are planning to do sampling at the trade shows or you're not planning to do sampling? 
change? I'll, I'll answer the second part of your question. For sampling, we are doing it in a number of places. Uh, all throughout our, wherever our food trucks are going, there will be samples provided uh, for customers to try the product. One of the difficulties that we faced when we picked the retail spots that we went to was they're, they're s relatively small than what, um, you know, what, what we see in Fargo or something. And getting a sampling station was somewhat of a difficulty. The solution that we came up with was actually getting our ice cream trucks and working with that business to place them in the parking lot to offer samples, increasing their traffic and increasing point of purchase sales. I want to touch real quick on your threats. Uh, you all did a really good job outlining those, but the last two specifically, potential competitive imitation and potential oversaturation of the market. Uh, do you guys have tactics in place or strategy to go back and, and not just monitor and, and realize those, but what if those two, th two things become extremely you know, competitive? Or, or With the saturated market, there are a lot of plant-based uh, products right now, but there are little to no oat-based products, so we will be one of the first oat-based products to hit the market. And then with the possible product imitation, our proprietary enzyme blend will allow us to differentiate ourselves from our competitors, and we have other plans such as being able to cut our price or maybe removing a demographic and their marketing expenses to remain competitive with other, uh, with other competitors. Very good. And you said that that was patented, right? Your yes, sir. Estimate? You've probably lived with this for about eight, nine months now, right? So what is, what's the thing that keeps you awake at night in terms of launching this product to market? And you're like, oh, crap, this is not going to happen because of what keeps you awake in terms of limiting the success of it? Clarify limiting the success of it. Uh, well, you know, so you, I mean, I think, I think your segmentation is really interesting, right, in terms of your Asian American audience and your foodie audience. But... You know, this is very much a pie in the sky question, right? It's something that just, it's probably not going to be in here. So, but just as what you've worked through over the last how many months of this assignment, you know, what's the thing that says, this is, I think this might fail or this could be a problem and we're not going to achieve the results that we think we can achieve? Sure. Well, first of all, what keeps us awake at night, thank you advisors for getting us here. <laughs> uh, but some of the, the, some of the challenges that we faced was, you know, looking at the, the West Coast. And we recognize that that can be an expensive area. Uh, and one of the strengths of our products is how segmented and how niche it really is. So we were able to turn that around into a strength and use publications that were really niche and so we can be cost effective. Along with that, with our Google AdWords and our, our digital media, we use a long tail location-based keyword to cut down the price on that as well. So some of the, pri the problems was, was going into the West Coast, because that's where our demographic was, okay. and finding a price point that really fit. Okay. Great. I think uh, the one thing that, and I'm all about North Dakota, but you're also going into a market that is not, it's a, you're marketing to California, Oregon, Washington, your brand name. Tell me, tell me how that, you arrived at North Dakota Nice versus, you know, East Coast Nice or whatever, you know, something, another brand name. Right, so part of what the foodie millennials like is they like to trace where their food comes from. And so we thought having the North Dakota on there not only pays tribute to our North Dakota farmers for providing the main component of our product, but also letting our foodies trace where their product came from. Can you go back and talk to us a little bit about Sunny Dairy and what's in it for Sunny Dairy? Yeah, so we're actually a 50-50 joint venture with Sunny Dairy. So right now, they're creating other uh, dairy products. So we would be adding into their line as well. So they produce ice cream, and we would just be a new launch for them. Your patented process, is that does that belong to you, or does that belong to Sunny Dairy? So they couldn't find another oat source and zip around you? Yep, that belongs to us. Mm -hmm. uh, Congratulations on putting slotting fees into your uh, <laughs> finances. That's good. But I want to take that a step further. Uh, other than slotting fees, what other retail type uh, you know, uh, plans do you have to try to both get your product in and keep it, especially with the competitive environment you're looking at? Yeah, that would be under our retail media. So we're very excited about uh, putting in advertisements and coupons in stores so that we know when customers enter that store, they are looking 
for North Dakota ice cream. Upon the slotting fees as well, we want to make sure that it's in you know, a, a visible area, whether that be middle or eye level of shelf. Very good.